Okay, take two. <laughs> Part two of the interview. <laughs> so, you know, when you do Facebook Live, you're at the mercy of your cell coverage. And when we were inside Shrine, I wasn't quite sure how the signal was going to last for this, this interview. So, Josie, my apologies. We got cut off. No problemo, brother. Man, I hope you don't get me in Facebook jail. <sighs> Dude, I'm still, I'm, I'm kind of new to Facebook. My wife's only got me on there for like, I think I've been on there for about a year, a year and a half, and I'm still figuring it out, so. Hey, when you figure it out, let me know. <laughs> so, okay, um, this is part two of our interview. Let's talk about the, the career. Uh, please take us through, of course, we know this is where we got cut off. We know the, the saliva beginning in the mid-90s, the, the giant radio hits that you still hear today. Um, and you left the band about 10 years ago, is that right? Yeah, I left the band uh, around 2011, uh, finished a USO tour that I had for the armed forces over in Korea and Japan because I didn't want to let those folks down and uh, came back home and left the band went home to raise my kids and spend some time with my wife and uh, just be a family man you know and loved every single day of it every day that I got to do that was a gift and once the, the kids got a little older my son is my son justice is 16 now and my daughters uh, Jordan and Jolie are 11 and 7 now so I'm gonna go back out and do some music i got the itch again <laughs> it's hard to get it out of your system i guess uh, I, i'm not a musician but i can only imagine so new music yeah i got a new single coming out in september called evil knievel and um you know when i left the band i had a personal trainer for years and years and i was you know they were telling me what to eat telling me where to work out and taking supplements and all this crap so as soon as i left saliva i was like bring on the the freaking fried chicken and cookie dough so i've been in the gym i've been in the gym for about the last six months um i'm back in fighting shape and um ready to get back out there and um, i'm gonna put a new record out under uh, the name shade violent which is exclusive for you guys um i'm gonna um get that out uh they get the single out around september and hopefully have the release out around christmas so i've read many musicians and songwriters write um the best when they write from the heart and i want you guys to know i, I cleared this with josie before i wanted to ask him in the interview about his son cody if you've not heard it is a heart-wrenching story that Josie had lost his uh, 29 year old son, his oldest son, uh, due to COVID. And um, we've heard many people on the news, we've seen a lot of it, but I've never really had um, a, a band of that I'm such a fan of go through something so personal. So he said it's okay to ask, I, and, I, and I appreciate the strength that you have to talk about it so for our viewers please talk a little bit about that just uh horrendous experience yeah um well i don't know if i'd call it strength i'd i'd call it you know god helping me through it you know um it's been the worst heartbreak um it's been just unimaginable you know when it first happened i was just reaching out for any kind of information about pa other parents who'd lost children or lost children to COVID and I googled it and it came back on Google and said the ultimate tragedy and I that just stuck with me from that moment forward and like I said it's been the hardest thing that me and my wife Kendra have been through and I mean the, the thing I hear from most parents like you said uh, to me being a parent you said I can't even imagine and that's the thing is they're supposed to bury you and you're not supposed to bury them. And, uh, but being the only good thing I can get out of this situation is my son would want me to go on. You know, I had a dream right after he died that I was laying on a boxing mat and I was bleeding. Blood was coming out my nose and my mouth. And I felt him grab my collar and pull me up and say, dad, you gotta get up, you gotta get up. And 
I, from that moment forward, I tried to, I started trying to get up. And uh, that's what this music is about. And, you know, people say, well, I wrote this song about him or I wrote that song about him. Every song is about him. Every single song. And we can expect this new music to come out by the end of the year. Is that what you said? Yeah, that's what I'm shooting for. That's definitely what I'm shooting for. You told me a, a, a very beautiful story about when Cody was born. Yeah. And in the hospital. And... Is it okay if I ask you to repeat that story for the viewers? Yeah. Well, when he was born on August 29th, on 1991, he was born on Michael Jackson's birthday, which is one of my idols. So I thought it was just poetic justice that he was born on that day. So the first time I got to hold him, he was my first child. So I held him and I looked into his eyes and over the music system in the hospital, the speakers started playing this Brian Adams song, uh, Everything I Do, I Do It For You. And so I sang this song to him for the first time uh, that, that night. And it was just a magical bonding moment that we had together. And I'll never forget that. And someday I plan on doing a remake of that song because that song is just, was just so special to me and him all through his life uh, and f- for the rest of my life. So what can you say uh, to the folks listening that, you know, we're, we're hoping that the COVID is behind us, although it's not. Um, you know, we're trying to, we're all, I think, trying to do the best we can. Sure. So do you have a message for uh, parents with, uh, with kids um, about COVID? Well, just not only parents with kids, but family members and people, you know, cousins and uncles and aunts and sisters and brothers. And all of us have got to appreciate every day that we have with each other, every second that we have with each other, with each other. And I'm not one to stand on my soapbox and preach because I am a failure and a broken man. But I can tell you one thing, if I've learned anything from from what happened with my with my son is to appreciate every second that we have with each other and to love each other and to put all this division and hate and mess behind us and just love and care and spend time with each other and appreciate every second because time is the only money that we cannot save. We can only spend. Amen to that. All right, Josie Scott. Thank you, Josie. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me, Lynn. Thank you, Tulsa. See you at Safari Joe's. Check me out at josiescott.com.